Everybody and welcome to the Hopcast. Thanks for joining us once again, everybody. I'm Brad Chmielewski. My name is Ken Hunnameter. And we have a couple tasty beers here. One yeah, let's hope. One from the U.S. and one from across the pond. Over yeah, there. Uh, we're gonna do some. Well, one Belgian beer and one Belgian style beer. Uh, so one actually made in Belgium, right here, which is the uh, Vicaris. Um, which has kind of an interesting story behind that brewery and that beer. Yeah. And we also have uh, Sly Fox, their Icker. Which I believe we've done a few Sly Fox things. I think we, have, mm -hmm. we had a raspberry maybe, uh, a couple other ones. Yeah, had a few of their beers in the past and, and enjoyed them very much. So looking forward to that. Right, so I think this is a double and that's a quadruple. So maybe start here and work up. I don't know exactly if alcohol content was on either one of these bottles. So. <laughs> We will find out, <laughs> and so will you. So yeah, let's crack it open. All right, cheers. Well, that one out of the bottle, bad. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it did. Um, that one, you, literally, when you took the cage off the cork, it started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think uh, my upstairs neighbors now know that we're drinking beer because that <laughs> thing just shot way up there. <laughs> and I think it could have something to do it was in my bag on the bike ride over here so I got shaken up a little bit but I'm yeah. sure there was other factors involved <laughs> as well <laughs> but it's got a really nice color yeah. uh, nice reddish hue to it mm -hmm. and especially in the sunlight looks really really tasty yeah yours is a little darker but it's probably the glass yeah. uh, some probably something to do with the glass and you have uh, the first pour yeah so there might be some sediment in there, but still around the edges getting a really nice, beautiful ruby color to it. And lots of little bubble, bubbles, so you know that carbonation, yeah, as we Obviously. found out. <laughs> that smells good. So, um, I'm coming off of a little bit of a cold, so I, I think I'm missing some of the aroma here. Yeah, it just reminds me of kind of summertime drinking, like outdoors. Yeah, like, it's there's not a whole lot of like caramel coming off of it or anything like that. Yeah, it smells fairly dry. Yeah, it's more of a memory, I guess, smell with mm -hmm. this beer. But. Well, cheers. Very dry. Yeah, not a lot of carbonation in the mouthfeel no um and I, I i appreciate the dryness that's what i a lot of times what i look for in belgian style beers is the fact that they're very they're very fruity and they appear sweet on the palate but they're really not they're they they feel dry in your mouth mm -hmm. and uh so not cloying and sweet and, and that kind of thing but uh you get that perceived sweetness uh from the fermentation that kind of offsets the fact that it's so dry yeah and that's uh, certainly the case here and it's yeah it's fairly re even though it is dry it's fairly refreshing mm -hmm. it doesn't um, yeah it doesn't leave your mouth dry it, and yeah <clears throat> yeah exactly but some really nice fruit character coming off of, of the beer itself yeah it's really I'm not fill up here and what's mm. the you were Telling me a little bit of the story behind this. Yeah, so they're a brewery. fairly new brewery, um, which is surprisingly for the climate there because of economic issues and all these breweries are shutting down and people are drinking less beer there. We're seeing more American breweries opening up, Europe seeing less breweries. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's run by uh, females uh, and her family. Uh, her dad's the head brewer and he comes up with the recipes and she helps brew and I think runs the brewery. And apparently their family had a brewery like up until World War II when all their metal and their tanks were compensated for weapons and mm -hmm. stuff. And so then it got shut down and now they're trying to build a new brand, I think. 
So the name of the actual brewery itself uh, appears to be uh, Dillwins. Uh, I have a hard time reading Belgian labels. <laughs> it's not very bright. Uh, but yeah, that appears to be the brewery, and then this, I, I don't know how many beers they make, but this would be the Vigorous. Right, I think they only have like four, at least, that you could find online. Which they is might pretty have... typical for, you know, Belgian breweries, as opposed to American breweries here. A lot of the American breweries make, you know, 25 different beers every See year. who can make the most beers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, over there, they kind of focus in on, like, hey, we make, we make these different Belgian styles, and that's it. We make three or four beers and that and that's it sometimes just one yeah and this beer's good i don't i don't know if it has anything that would make me remember it or come back to it but it's good having it now it's a nice solid beer um nothing really standoutish. i think you're right yeah but uh you know good easy drinkable beer yeah see it going good about eight percent right, right yeah eight eight point eight or something and it's it's not drinking like an eight percenter it's no. going down pretty smooth so. See it going great with dinner. Like it mm -hmm. just feels like it's not gonna fight with really anything you're eating. Yeah, yeah I could see something along the lines of like a duck with some sort of berry oh, sauce so on fancy. top. <laughs> yeah, you know, because uh, it it has a little bit of that kind of like a cherry tartness to it. So something along those lines where it's like a gamey meat with a little bit of uh, tart sauce of some sort on the on on the side. I think would go really nicely with this beer. Nice. Yeah. You got, any, you got any duck around? Might have to go hunting. I don't. <laughs> There's about eight slabs of barbecue on the on the smoker right now, which I don't think would really go with mm. this, but <laughs> we'll find something. Well, yeah. Cheers. Let's I'm sure we'll finish off this bottle. Absolutely. It's delicious. We will. <laughs> well, cheers. All right. Well, that went down fairly easy. Yeah, it was a nice drinkable beer, especially uh, if you're looking to get an alcohol hit, that would be one for you. Yeah. Well, let's see how the Americans yes. do the... <laughs> Are we going to get a hopped up style? Or I think they'll probably be pretty true. Style. I, you know, anytime that something is packaged, I, it, it must be just a marketing thing, but anytime it, something is packaged this way, it makes me feel like it's just going to be more traditional. With and the, that's with probably the cage, stupid with the of cage me. and the cork and everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. S uh, traditional style wise, so I I don't know. It's just a sense I get, but we'll find out. There's uh, only one way to. All right, let's see if we got another exploder. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little darker than the other one. Still some of that red. Yeah, uh, definitely some red in there. Not quite as pretty as the other beer. No. But that one was a, a damn fine looking beer. Right. And this one's got, it had a lot of sediment in there. You can see stuff floating around in there, too. Yeah, and we, we just have the top of the bottle here. Yeah. So I'm sure it's going to get murkier and murkier as we, as we go down. And again, lots of little bubbles, high carbonation, but really nice white, clean head there. Mm hmm. It's, the aroma is quite pleasant. It's got some fruity character, but, you know, uh, not really a hot bomb, as we discussed before, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is nice. And I like the aroma better on this one than the first beer. Just, I do, there's too. More, there's a little more going on. There is. Uh, yeah, I, I, I honestly couldn't pick up too much going on in the, in the other one. But this one, uh, I, I'm getting a little bit more of that caramel sweetness and some fruit character. Yeah. It smells good. Cheers. Mm. That's one of those beers when you drink it and it just like kind of explodes, <laughs> yeah. where the uh, the carbonation level is so high that it kind of like just fills your mouth with foam. It's like I shouldn't have took such a big drink. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But man, is it? Yeah, it's highly carbonated, very very pleasant. Wow. Oh, yeah. um, you you kind of looking. I mean, this is a quadruple, so it's gonna, it it is a little sweeter than the other beer, not quite as dry. And it, it does taste a little more alcohol in there. Um, mm -hmm. It's at ten percent. I think the other one was at nine. So it's not that much of a difference, but it feels it feels bigger. There's a yeah. There's a little bit of heat uh, in the finish, mm -hmm. uh, not in an unpleasant way by any stretch, 
because we like alcohol. <laughs> but <laughs> as uh, you all know. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, there is a little bit more heat in the back end of it. Uh, but some of the fruit character on this is is really 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 nice. Uh, it's it's really roasted too, which I expect from the color, but like caramel roast. Yeah, caramely more than like you know not not really stout roastish, no. but like uh, you get a lot of caramel. Um, the fruits that I pick out the most right now, I'm getting a lot of mango, and um, you know some of your typical ones, the, the you know the, your raisin and prune and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But there's a nice little mango hit. What tropical? Oh. Mm -hmm. Quite nice. Yeah, it's really good. Um, and I'm always impressed by Sly Fox stuff. We don't, we can't get their stuff here, no. right? So, it's either in trades or people send them to us or traveling. Just, yeah, that kind of stuff. They're out in New York, right? Uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Oh. Right. I That's what I, I hate when you when I when I go to New York and I get beers there. I always assume that they're from New York. Uh, so <laughs> I can't get it, so it must be from New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they're. I don't know how close they are to the border, but I feel like they're close because I think a lot of people from New York would go to releases there, and mm -hmm. so it must be close enough that it's not five hour drive like sure. it is for us. So. Sure. Yeah, quite nice. But yeah, both pretty impressed similar, by this. similar style, of course, similar styles. Uh, they're both pretty different, but it's nice to see the traditional style and then the American kind of playing off what was already there and kind of changing it enough that makes it their own. Yeah, it's always a it's a scary one when uh, you're you're putting American uh, breweries that are trying to emulate uh, a, a brewing tradition that has been. Uh, has existed for so long and been so damn tasty the whole time. Yeah. Uh, but they've they've done a wonderful job on this beer. It's pretty pretty damn nice. Yeah. So if you see either one of these, if you can get your hands on them, definitely give them a taste. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's been it's been good drinking today. No. Yeah. Beautiful weather. Beautiful beers. Oh, nice. <laughs> this is the good life. <laughs> right. <laughs> and thank you guys for watching the Hopcast. Cheers. Sure.